Look at how rad this shotgun looks. You are stupid if you don't buy it on looks alone. I'm kidding. That's what the internet will tell you. That's what a lot of reviewers will tell you in so many words. This is a Typhoon F12, nothing fancy review. I'm in the bunker. Get ready for some truth darts on this shotgun. Yes. I did watch some reviews on this. And I got to tell you, um, I wasn't in agreement with a lot of the things they were saying. I'm kind of thinking they got the gun for free. That's kind of what I thought after watching the videos. Yeah, I do have some bad things to tell you about this gun. If you own one already and you did not wait for my review, don't know what to tell you, bro. <laughs> don't know what to tell you. Um, there are some good things, though, too. Good things about the F12. Here's one of them. You're looking at it. It is fabulous looking. A great looking AR pattern, 12 gauge, semi-automatic shotgun, the F12. Very cool. On looks alone, I know it is selling and it has sold. The Turkish firearms industry, especially their shotgun subdivision, they're smart. They know how to put together guns that will attract the American buyer. This is one of them. They're good at making shotguns that guys just want. The AR-15, the most popular rifle in America, if they make a shotgun that follows that pattern and looks cool in a camouflage pattern, someone's going to notice it on the shotgun, uh, shotgun, the store shelf, and they'll buy it. Cold turkey. Guys will do that. I see it all the time at the gun stores when I'm there lurking. Yeah, I do lurk. I'll just hang out there and just see what guys are saying what the gun clerks are saying. I have my face mask on so I can conceal my identity. Uh, not for the scamdemic, by the way. <laughs> no. And I'm just sitting there just listening and I'm astounded at what I hear sometimes. Guys will buy guns on looks alone. Or maybe on one of those reviews they saw on the Typhoon F12. It comes in several different colors. I've seen some other camouflage patterns that are equally cool. An urban kind of weathered gray Cerakote. And these are all Cerakoted finishes. Uh, tactical black and there are some other variations so this is the longer variation i believe there's a on this one a 18.5 inch barrel yeah and i think they make them with shorter barrels and short hand guards which we'll talk about but that's a good thing it looks great and on looks alone it will will and has sold onto pou we go in what hopefully will be a shorter format to shotgun review here in the bunker what would you get this thing for the first thing I've kind of touched on already, and that is second cool. Guys just like it. It turns them on. They see this thing and they go, oh my gosh, that is so rad. I got to have it. Looks like one of my video game guns. And no, I don't play video games. If I didn't have TMP, would I play video games? Uh, yeah, probably a little bit. World of Tanks and DCS, Digital Combat Simulator. I, I'd probably do those. They're more simulations than video games, I guess. I don't know. I don't have time, though. I can't do TMP and do all the other things I do in life. Uh, no, I'm in the real world, not in the digital world, uh, video gaming at least. No, so second cool, it might remind them of some gun they saw. I don't know. Uh, home defense, yeah, you could. I think you could do a lot better with a pump shotgun or semi-automatic tube-fed shotgun. They're going to be slimmer, easier. You don't need that many rounds in a home defense situation in rule of law. Without rule of law, communist zombie killer. Uh, yes, but I'm going to say this here. I've said it in any time uh, I review a magazine fed large, and they're all large, 12 gauge semi-auto shotgun. These are problematic. Anytime you go to the magazine, problematic. They're hard to carry, they're hard to store, and they're hard to have on your person when you really need them. And you guys, probably like most guys, are not in shape. You might be carrying a few extra pounds already. I am now in there uh so when you add a whole bunch more weight to your lbe are you really ready to carry around that weight another disadvantage in modern production shot shells their plastic tends to be very soft and deformable so when you load these magazines up and i've said this ever since i've been talking about these the magazines they can deform especially if you think you're going to preload them and then you go a month later six months later those shot shells are not round anymore. They're kind of cylindrical, not cylindrical, but uh, oval, and they can cause jams. It can happen in any magazine-fed shotgun. Is there a way to get around it? 
the best way I found is just load your magazines up when you're getting ready to shoot them. That's the surefire way. And there are some shot shells that have bragged about how uh, strong their their casings are. Maybe look for those, but again, more money, more money, more money. And during the scamdemic, it's really hard to find pretty much anything. So good luck with that. Philosophy of use. Uh, vehicle gun, absolutely not. Hunting gun, absolutely not. Uh, all around tactical gun, mm, highly debatable because of its disadvantages. But I think guys think that. I mean, they're like, they'll look at a gun like this and go, oh, I can load it quicker. And you can, assuming you have that system in place and you know what you're doing, you're practiced. But they, they say, yeah, I can really spit out a lot of lead with this thing. Uh, with limitations, the answer might be yes, but I would rather usually go with a different platform myself. Uh, just fun gun? Yeah, I'll give you that. Enough POU. On to features we go. Okay, so you get a lot with your Typhoon F12. They, they, it comes with like three five-round magazines, four Benelli threaded choke tubes. That's cool. It comes with like a fake suppressor, whatever that's about, okay? Are you guys going to use this? Do you guys get off on fake suppressors? Okay, and then it comes with this thing, whatever the hell that is. And then it uh, comes with your specialized disassembly tool, which is a huge disadvantage. I'm going to hit this when we go to the gas piston system. But this is, uh, you know, one of the tubes screwed in. And I didn't change it. This is just what came on the gun because I, I didn't pattern it. I don't have any paper to show you. I usually, usually blow up my wooden targets when I do it. So I usually don't do that with shotguns. Uh, I like that. I mean, I like that you can screw them in, and, but that's not anything unusual. I think some guys, for whatever reason, uh, think about suppressing the F12. And I did see a carbon fiber suppressor. It's one of the trade shows guys are putting on the F12. And then they're, you know, whispering death with their AR pattern shotgun. Okay, cool. Now your gun's going to weigh even more, which I'll get back to. Trust me. So this barrel is 4150 steel chrome plated, which is awesome. The Turks do a great job in chrome lining their, their bores, usually two and three quarter and three inch chambering on the barrel. This is an 18.5 inch barrel, which is uh, kind of a long platform, right? Again, I think they make, I'm not positive, but I think they make a shorter barrel, shorter handguards for sure I've seen. So maybe you'd see, search those out. Maybe you have one already. Uh, they do talk about with the barrel, which seems to be high quality, is that there's a, an extended forcing cone, that portion following the chamber, which constricts the shot in the, uh, the cup down the barrel. And it's, well, it's very gradual. And they say it's supposed to give you a 6% reduction in perceived recoil with your Typhoon F12. I didn't notice that, by the way, but that's what they're talking about. This right here is your gas system. Okay, so your piston is right here under a very slender handguard. We'll talk about that separately. And it's this gun, the F12, is supposedly able to shoot light loads and heavy loads, i.e., high base is what I call it. Either a heavy velocity or high velocity, like 1200 feet or more, 1300 feet per second uh, shot shell. Uh, think buckshot. That's either a, a pheasant, turkey load, or buckshot is usually the high base or higher power load. The whole system of how you change this gun over is ridiculous. To a, 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 a low load to a high load. It's asinine. You have to remove the entire handguard, which involves removing these two, these two screws here, this one here, using that specialized tool. You'll do some takedown here. You'll eventually get to that piston and it is reversible. So it has an arrow on it that says, I think, light on it. And the arrow goes towards receiver if that is the load you're shooting. First up, it's very non-intuitive. And I've understood that some of those pistons are mismarked anyhow. So there can be some confusion there to the end user after he's spent, I don't know, half an hour taking his forend off to an average user. I'm not making that up. It'd probably be a half an hour job at least. Then you got to figure out, okay, it mates into this, you can't really see it very well, and maybe I roll in some of the drawings, mates into this cup, this chrome-plated cup, and what you're doing with a light load is you're putting that piston so the, the gap in that cup is more narrow, and then you flip it around for like a buckshot load where more gas can escape. Just look at the gap. That's a surefire way to know you have your Typhoon F12 piston oriented properly. What I'm ranting about here is that it's not an easy system to access. It's a pain in the butt. It takes a lot of time. It takes a specialized takedown tool, which is not lightweight. So if you think you're just going to carry this on your LBE, there's more weight. It's just a hassle. 
Now, I love the FN SLP, self-loading police shotgun. That one you actually have to take apart, although it's a lot easier than this and quicker than this, and then you put in a different piston. So that's a hassle too. And I mentioned that in my 2010 review. I still have my SLP. I love it. But that gun is what, 25 years old, that design, maybe older. This is a newer production. They should have improved the ergonomics on the gas adjustment system. It should be something simpler. Or if you're going to make your guy take off the handguard and disassemble, just make that process easier. There you go. I find it not intuitive all, uh, at all and hard to do. The handguard itself is pretty excellent. It's uh, low profile. This one is long and adds a lot of weight to this very heavy gun. And I'll say it here. Empty with a magazine, nine pounds, eight ounces, y'all, on the Typhoon F12. Did your reviews tell you about how damn heavy it is? Empty. You put a 10 round magazine on this and you put an optic on it. You're looking at mm, probably approaching and loaded 11 pound gun, 11 pound shotgun. Yeah, dude. Think about that. Let that sink in. Yeah, that's a lot. A lot of the weight is coming from this handguard, which I think is 6,000 series aluminum. They're saying in their specifications it's T7. It might be, but it doesn't matter. It's uh, There's a, just a lot of metal there. And in this version, the 18 and a half inch barrel version, it kind of needs to be longer because the piston's right here, right here I'm holding, thereabouts. M-lock on the bottom might have some M-lock capability uh, on... No, those aren't M-lock capable. And you, you couldn't do it anyhow because the clearances of that gas piston in the handguard and the Typhoon are very, very tight. Here's more metal on the top. We have a raised extended Picatinny rail, which is okay. And there is some ventilating going on there. And they are raising it for more ergonomic siding, I guess. But overall, it's just a very heavy gun. Very heavy gun. Uh, 7075 upper and lower. I like that. It's good. Really nice trigger guard here. Wouldn't have to modify it. You couldn't anyhow because it's milled in or it's forged in the way it is. And the controls on here are actually pretty good. I, I like the controls. 90 degree throw lever. It's well marked. It's ambidextrous on the safety. Great magazine button extended. Look how big that is. That's like a, an aftermarket edition you put on your AR-15. You have a reciprocating charging handle. And the charging handle needs no addition. It's awesome ergonomic ventilated i found it to be comfortable to use then you have a nice big extended bad leverish uh, action release on the air side as you know let's look inside here uh, we do have some milling out here for weight i think it's more for aesthetics because this thing is damn heavy looking inside here when i took it apart the overall looks inside are high quality i didn't look at the typhoon and go oh that's crap that's crap. And oh, by the way, you see that portion right here? They have what's called, make sure I say this right, a spring ejector system on their bolt. So that's supposed to give you higher reliability in your Typhoon F12. We'll talk about how it shot. Sights. I would say, and these are included, they're pretty excellent. They're very embussy from Magpul. Non-locking, but they're pretty excellent. I love them. I shot with them. I would be really reticent to add an optic to this thing. Sorry if I'm yelling in the mic. Yeah, this thing is, uh, these are great sights. They locked on, they didn't come loose, or the sights themselves are lightweight. Yeah, I didn't try to put a different front post in there. It's probably AR-15 compatible. I love the sights on it though. Uh, trigger, flat bladed, skeletonized. Some of you guys will like it. I don't like how it pulled at nine pounds. It seems lighter. I was a little bit surprised how heavy that pulled, but ugh. flat blade too. I could do without flat blades forever, says me. And then you have a, a really nice pistol grip here, AR-15 compatible, and it is not rubber covered. That is kind of a polymer, so it's a really nice cover on that. It's not grabby. It's very nice. It does have finger grooves, so that may disappoint you in some way. There's your buttstock fixed, and it did come loose during shooting. So I'd have to take that off, tighten everything up, maybe do a little bit of lock tightening going on there. That is disappointing. It is a 12 gauge shotgun. I don't expect, expect everything to always be tight. I've had other shotguns, really good ones where things come loose, especially if I light a ma or mount a light to them. You have QD cups here and there, I think. Well, not cups, but you got the sling right here. Sling mount and a QD cup here is what I was thinking if you want to sling it up. And I think it does come with a sling. I don't use them very often just because they just create more time in testing. Nice recoil pad here. 
And that's basically features on your F12. How did it shoot? Well, I took this sucker out on multiple outings and I really wanted the Typhoon F12 to do well. I did. Um, I just could not get it to run, guys. I mean, I would shoot a few rounds and it would, it would jam. And it didn't really matter what type of round I was shooting. So when I had the piston swap to low recoil, I ran low recoil, like promotional ammo, as I call it, low base, low power ammo. I didn't like them. It was jamming a lot with those. And uh, so I really didn't know what to think then. I was like, well, let me get try it again. I flipped the piston around to heavy loads and ran buckshot. And it still didn't do good. It still had problems. Now, again, I have this thing in the project, you guys know, uh, it's called the curse of the desert. So I, I'll get a gun that runs great for everybody else. And then I take it out there and I don't know what the heck's going on. I just have problems with it. And this is one of those guns. I am a little bit hesitant to condemn the F12 because there are a lot of great reports about how reliable it has been for people. But I have to tell you how this one shot for me and it did not shoot well. It had all types of problems. So much so that I had to discontinue testing. I was just sick of it. And I don't know how much, uh, and I lost a hard drive, so I lost some shooting footage of that. So you may not have that much to show you. But I just wasn't digging it. Not only that, I, I think it's just too damn heavy. I mean, it is basically over 10 pounds when I load it. I found it uncomfortable to hold and shoot. Yes, I know more weight makes a 12 gauge semi-auto shoot more comfortably in theory, right? I still didn't dig it. There's nothing I liked about this gun other than an AR pattern controls. I thought that was fine. If you dig in the manual, it says, hey, by the way, you need to use high power loads, at least 50 rounds to break the shotgun in. Here's nothing fancy to all shotgun manufacturers. Don't make your users break your shotguns in. If that's something you're putting in your manual, you need to do it. You don't want to force your users to go spend $75 on buckshot and their time to make their damn gun reliable. You do it. You shouldn't have to break in any shotgun. So that's kind of new. And I'm going to say this from here on out. I don't know if I said that before. I don't care if it's American shotgun, Turkish shotgun, Chinese shotgun, whatever. I'll say it. Don't make your guy break in the shotgun. It's a bunch of BS. So yeah, it was unreliable. I, I don't know what else to tell you. I mean, for a 38 inch you know, 10 and a half pound gun, unreliable, count me out. Uh, I just really wasn't impressed with anything about it uh, other than the AR controls. And don't make me break it in. That's a bunch of BS. Um, would I buy one? I think you know the answer to that. The answer is absolutely not. I would not buy a Typhoon F12. Uh, I was kind of setting you up in the beginning, like how cool it looks. And it does look cool. But don't ever, ever, ever go by looks alone. Whether you're dating, getting married, or buying a dang gun, get to know the gun and from a reliable source. By the way, I'm that reliable source. Yeah, you might wait for my review before you go buy these. Now, if you have an F12 and you go, hey, I've ran everything through it and it's 100%. I think I represented that already. I'm not going to call you a liar by any means. You just got a better gun. And maybe the rounds I used, the shells I used, just whatever reason, they didn't work with the F-12. But that gets to another problem with the whole gun, is that if it requires special ammunition, it requires a special way to adjust for that ammunition, which is a complete fail to me. It's a non-starter, the way you flip that gas piston over in the Typhoon F-12. Count me out. You know, well, I tried some of these Fioki dove loads, ran it with this stuff. And like three other rounds, it just, you know, I put, how many rounds did I put through this? Honestly, it was hard because it started jamming so many, many times. I bet you I only put like 300 rounds total through it. So not that much, but if it was reliable, it would have been more. But if it's not reliable, no, thank you. No, I wouldn't buy it. It's, it's a fail. Too heavy, too expensive too. I think these are run around a thousand bucks, but I, it's going to attract guys who are, don't like the plasticky Turkish AR pattern semi-auto shotguns. I'm going to show you one here in just a second. It attracts those guys. They go, yeah, man, it feels good. It feels quality. And it does present well. Like if you look at it and you look at the Cerakoting on this, it looks legit, dudes. Yeah, it's awesome. But uh, no, thank you. Competitive options. Here we go. Now I reviewed this one and this one, <laughs> it might be a little bit airsofty for you guys. Uh, but it shot well. This is the Rock Island Armory VR60. 
Make sure I'm telling you right. Yeah, Der Derja Arms VR60. There you go. Paint. A lot more plastic, but that's what I like. Remember, you're going to carry this thing a lot, shoot it little, especially if you're fighting against communist zombies. Now, carrying around a 10 and a half pound, 11 pound auto shotgun, I'm not, I'm not up for it, no way. Again, this gun shot yeah. very well. It's stable mate, did not go look those reviews up, but I bought this. It's so inexpensive well, and I'm just going to shoot it through the years. Is, you know, is it totally GTW ready? I don't know. I don't know. There's some uh, grip tape I put on the forehand that solved that problem. This one's way easy to take apart and it shot light loads, buckshot, no jams as I re recall. Now, if you're going to go for home defense, you want a semi-auto shotgun. I would go with like a Mossberg so Jerry Mikulik, like 930, yeah. 940, something like that. Those are outstanding. They're American made. But if you want to save some money, I've reviewed this. I do talk about it. This is the Stoger M3000. This is the one I was thinking of. Six pounds, 14 ounces. Stoker M3000. It's labeled right here. Yeah, this thing is awesome. This is a great home defense shotgun right here. Has the amount of rounds you need in rule of law, home defense, absolutely. Shoots great. It recoils less than the other one, and I don't think this has an extended forcing cone on it. Nice. No screwing chokes, don't care. I'm using it to about 25 yards, if that. Great sights on it, ghost ring. Outstanding charging handle, better than the Typhoon F12. Very lightweight method to attach optics to your aluminum receiver. <laughs> Yeah, six pounds, 14 ounces. This is the one I was thinking of. Great butt pad. Highly recommended the M3000 or others like it. There's so many great shotguns out there. Uh, I'm going to call it a pass on the Typhoon F12. Please uh, let me know if you have one, if you shot it, you love it. Uh, even if it's reliable, it's way too damn heavy for me. Uh, no way. Once again, this review has been brought to you by my awesome donors. Become one. You've been seeing the banner run at the bottom of the video. It is the reason I do this work for you. Become a donor, long-term donor, two years or more is what I call it. Thanks to Gunny's, the Great American Gun Store, for uh, loaning me this Typhoon for test and review. I'm getting it back to them as soon as possible. There's no way in heck I would ever buy it. See ya.